How is Donald Trump like a socialist dictator? Let's count the ways. We will build a great wall. We're going to charge you a 35% tax. All right, let's pause the list there. I'm not saying that Donald Trump's a socialist, but some of his ideas are pretty close. Mises Institute economist Ryan McMacken says the road to socialist misery is a slippery slope, and some of Trump's ideas put us on that slope. Yes, well, and Trump is a politician, and his methods are the same as all other politicians. The idea is to, to control, to regiment, to redistribute wealth, and so that's what he's doing. How is cutting imports or t taxing them socialist? By imposing tariffs. He's doing a couple of things. First of all, he's raising more revenue for the, the state to do things and to redistribute wealth. But also by increasing tariffs and any restrictions on trade, he's telling people what they can and cannot buy, at what price they can and cannot buy. It's simply another type of central planning. Last year in Venezuela, the dictator ordered deportation of immigrants from Colombia. Economic nationalism. So we're going to use the power of the state to uh, exclude foreign goods, foreign persons, uh, any sort of foreign influence in our country on this idea that the things that are foreign are somehow a threat to domestic markets. That and the foreigners culture. are doing bad things. That's right, by taxing them more through tariffs that we're somehow taxing these, these bad foreigners. Or in the case of Venezuela, kicking them out. They kicked out the Colombians, but the Colombians were often the business people who sold them the things they needed. Well, and of course, Venezuela is much poorer than Colombia, so it's not like a bunch of people are sneaking into Venezuela from Colombia to take advantage of the Venezuelan system. These are, in that case, very productive people that are trying to go do trade and, and bring wealth into Venezuela, and they're being kicked out. Now, this crass comparison I'm, I'm making, Trump got elected. A lot of these socialist dictators are dictators. They didn't. Venezuela still has elections, and they have a constitution, and according to their law, these people are legally uh, the, the leaders of this country. And fundamentally, no regime is truly unpopular in the sense that nobody wants it. Any regime that exists, whether they're elected or not, enjoys the approval of at least some of the population. Now, under Venezuelan socialism, the government took over the oil fields and... It's one reason they don't have enough oil now, because they just suck at managing things. They then took over agriculture, finance, they bankrupted them themselves. We're not doing that. The U.S., no, isn't nationalizing uh, companies in that way at all. The U.S. prefers instead to really just partially nationalize industries, regulate it, perhaps buy a stake in it, as was the, the case under TARP. Some would argue that Donald Trump, by going to Indiana and doing a special deal with the carrier company, this is kind of like nationalizing. It's saying, do what I want, and you're okay. And, and he's going to go, what, industry by end, company by company? There's this sort of Damocles hanging over all these companies now. So I could see then the administration going around to different companies, declaring victory after they get the, country, the company to stay in the country. Uh, but, but really what it is is... Well, we're threatening all these people who, do, who leave with a huge tax. But again, that tax isn't just on this company. And that tax is going to be on anyone who wants to purchase from that company. Or in the, if Carrier were to go to another country, people would have had access to less expensive air conditioning. In Venezuela, the dictator doesn't like the media pointing out that there are problems, like food shortages. America's president-elect doesn't like the media either. I'm going to open up our libel laws so when they write purposely negative and horrible and false articles, we can sue them and win lots of money. Now, obviously, in America, we still have a free press. In Venezuela, however, opposition TV stations have been shut down. A newspaper editor gets sent to jail. One newspaper is covered in feces. Anytime we get this information out here that shows the regime isn't doing a bang-up job, therefore we then go and attack the newspapers and so on. But this is well, just what is Venezuela has a constitution, and it says it protects freedom of expression. Yes, and uh, apparently the constitution is too weak. Or apparently a large portion of the population is willing to tolerate these attacks on freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is much stronger in the U.S., and that's one of the great things about well, it. Well, it is so far, so far. That's why I was appalled when I was looking at my Twitter feed on my phone, and right up top was a personal message to me from Donald Trump. 
Nobody should be allowed to burn the flag. If they do, perhaps a year in jail. Now that creeped me out. Well, and, and it's, it's really kind of a moot point. The Supreme Court has certainly already ruled on flag burning. It's yeah, it's free speech. Right. It's also private property. If I buy the flag, it's my flag. I can do to it what I want. Say you even made the flag. You uh, spun the yarn and wove the flag out of the thread, and, and you made it in your home, and then you burn it. Why would the government have any issue so with that? So why does Donald Trump say that? And in fact, Hillary Clinton wanted to ban it, too. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Well, I think it appeals to a certain segment of his supporters, this idea that uh, there are these un-American types out there who are saying things that are unpatriotic and, and damaging to the United States. Uh, but, of course, it would be far more damaging to the U.S. to start uh, clamping down on freedom of speech. Now, after making these nasty comparisons of Donald Trump, I want to end by pointing out that there are a bunch of things he seems to be doing that we think are good. Right. One of the best things about his uh, election campaign was that he often spoke about the crushing burden of regulations on business. And I think that's why a lot of people voted for him, is they're concerned about their ability to earn a living. And He'll cut he the regulations. He make good Supreme Court appointees. He's got a school choice advocate at the education department. Right. And so people want to be left alone. A lot of people do. Uh, clearly not all You think all he'll people. leave us alone? Are you excited <laughs> about the next four years? Well, it's so hard to cut through the rhetoric to figure out what he means very seriously and what he's joking about. And that is the problem we saw in South America. Is Trump a true believer or he's a pragmatic politician? Hopefully he's a pragmatist. Thank you, Ryan McMacken.